in many of the sample programs that we've seen in class for programming in Java, you've seen how I've ha had a main method and had it chain off to some other method, say, called do it. So here, in this case, I've got main, and I'm not doing that. Main is itself attempting to call some other methods, and this causes a problem. If we, we see here that the, the point of this example is I'm trying to find the largest and the smallest of three integers. So let's say I declare my three integers x, y, and z, and I want to store the largest and I want to store the smallest, and uh, I've taken my program, I want to divide it up into pieces here. So uh, yes, I could write all of this inside of main and, uh, and not use methods at all, but I'm trying to illustrate the point for larger sections of code, how we'd want to do this. So, uh, so I have a method to read in the three numbers, I have a method to find the max and the min, and then we just print out done. So down here, uh, we have the code to read in the three numbers, so we have the prompt, enter three integers, and, uh, and then we read in x, y, and z. And then down here, find max and min is this next method where we'd say uh, the largest, and again, these are, are declared up here uh, globally. So the largest, it finds it. The smallest, it finds it. And in fact, we could print out the largest and the smallest. We could that print, that, print that up here inside of main, right? Because we're sharing this information. And the code for finding the max, and I'm just nesting a call to max in here. So if I send it two integers, x and y, and it catches the two integers and it returns the largest of the two. And similarly for min, it does the same thing. And so I can just make a call to max inside of, inside of another call to max to find the maximum of, of three values, to find the largest and the smallest. So we are using these variables largest and smallest in multiple places of our program. We're using it right here, and we're also using them up here. And then there, this is possible because they're declared up here Globally, there are instance variables that are shared throughout these methods. So this is the problem that we're having. Main is static, and so we're getting these error messages. So this is the, the setup of the situation, what we want to do, what the problem is. Let's turn our attention now to, to the conceptually of how this all works. So the question is, in a Java program, why make main chain off to a non-static method such as called do it? And uh, the concepts behind all this are that Java programs are built from multiple classes where each one is in its own file. So a square class, date class, student class, different examples of this. And the code in each of the .java files will be shared among the instances of that class. So for instance, if I've got multiple squares, um, if I had square S1, square S2, when I call, uh, when I print each of those squares, the toString method, the same code is called from each one of those instances but the values for the variables that are printed have to do with the memory for each of those instances. So multiple classes, each of them in their own file. So that's the first concept that, that ties into this. Multiple classes. Second, if we have a long section of code, typically we'd want to split it, its sections up into separate methods. So if we do this and want to, so we can use return value for, for, for one value to be shared, we could send multiple values in as parameters, but if we want multiple methods to share some variables, such as over here, if we see variables x, y, and z, and variables largest and smallest, and if we had input in multiple methods, keyboard would be in, in different places. If we wanted these variables to be shared, then we, we put them where we have them here, right? Up as, as instance variables, so they're shared across uh, across these uh, the different methods. So if if we uh, so if we have long code, we want to split it up into methods. We make those instance variables. So that's what we've done up above. When we have multiple classes, Java needs to know where to start, how to link it all together, and so the starting point is the the .java file that has public static void main declared in it. So a static variable would be a variable, a single variable that exists across all instances uh, for a class. So similarly, a static method is a single method that's shared across ob all objects of the class. So there is only one starting point. There's only one main in a Java program. So this is the setup. These are the, the issues. So the problem then is this example that we've seen here, we have a Java file that contains main, 
And um, we don't really have enough code to warrant breaking it up, but let's pretend that we do long sections of code. We want to organize our thoughts. We break it up into separate methods. And we want the methods to share values. So this is the problem. Because main is static. There's a single main method. So it can't reference the instance variables. Because if it referenced the instance variables, so main, there's only one of main. If it references an instance variable, it doesn't know which version to use. Instance variables are associated with a particular object. So it doesn't know which object the instance variables are associated with if it were to reference them. Similarly, main cannot call non-static methods because main itself is static. And if it calls a non-static method, that means that that method could refer to instance variables. But how would it know which version of the instance variables to use? In a square, if I'm printing out the x and y location of a square, well, it's the x and y that belongs to a particular square. x and y in general really doesn't mean anything. So we have several solutions here, uh, several options for a solution. First of all, we could declare everything inside of main. But then we can't break up code into multiple methods and have the information shared between the multiple methods. So that's a problem there. So that's not a good solution. Second approach, we could create a tiny stub class and the only thing it has in it would be main, and it chains off to some other method. Well, if we're going to do that, why not just take that same idea and do it within the code that is, in fact, the starting point for our program, which is the approach that we take here in number three. So we chain off from main to some non-static method. So we do this, so we have to create an object, and then the object has to call the, uh, the method because um, non-static methods have to be called from the perspective of an object. And we make the object of the same type. It's an instance of the class that this is in. And so then this chains off to some non-static methods such as do it, and then everything goes from there, and we can have methods calling each other, use instance variables to share information, and everything is fine. So now let's go and take a look at this code. Uh, now that we've saw the example, and we've seen some of these issues that are involved, Let's go look at the code in particular here and see how we solve this. So here we, again, we're trying to find the largest and the smallest of these variables. Inside of main, which is static, I'm trying to call this method read in three numbers. And we get this error message. It says, cannot make a static reference to the non-static method. OK, so, so you look at that and go, hmm, well, what if I just take read in three numbers and make that static? Yeah, that'll work. Let's see, static. And there we go. Oh, now we got another error down here. So I can't make a static reference to the non-static field x. OK. So I could make everything static, all the variables static, all the methods static, and that would work. But that means that uh, in, in other situations where I want to make multiple instances of this class, then these would no longer be instance variables. So the alternative to doing this is in fact what we do is main is going to chain off to another method that has this code in it. So we're going to make a method that's called do it. And inside of do it, we're going to put all the code. So grab this and we put it in here. So, uh, so now the compiler, it, it says, oh, everything's fine, but I have to connect to this somehow. I have to start it up. So how can I call method do it? This one is not static. And I have to make sure it stays not static so I can call this other non-static methods. So in order to do that, I need an instance, some instance, and then I can call do it on that instance. So to make some instance, and this is you know, a name of our own choosing, I have to make an instance of some class. And then I can use that instance. Well, what class should I use? Well, you know, this is the class that I'm in. So I'm just going to make an instance of this class that I'm in. So I'll say, uh, I'll take the name of this class. Whoops, wrong thing here. Let me copy this up here. Create the instance. Use default constructor. So I made an instance of this class that I'm in. So now I have an instance. So the instance can call this method, which chains off to the non-static method. And off we go, and everything's fine. So we could run our program, enter three integers, 3, 8, 2. Largest and smallest are 8 and 2. Done. 
And there we have it.